Hi, welcome to Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. We have so many issues today with insurance, don't we? Uh, what's the right insurance to carry? We, do we need Medicare? Do we need Medicaid? Do we need Advantage plans? Do we need supplements? Do we need prescription plans? It just really makes my head spin. And I recently met with someone, a friend named Charles King, who, uh, Charles, you are a numbers man. I see that you have your bachelor's degree in accounting and taxation. Oh, Oh, and we need people like you in the world. We definitely do. Um, but that you have moved on into being a specialist in uh, the Medicare, Medicaid insurance realm. Can you share that a little bit? What brought that on? Um, I actually had a uh, accounting tax client that needed um, some help deciding. He didn't know anything about Medicare. So I did this research and he asked me why I was not licensed to help him out with this. <laughs> Um, so I became licensed, and uh, actually for the, the firm I work with, p l Financial, and it's a branch of American Senior Benefits, I actually do taxes for clients there oh. for in retirement. And we actually specialize in minimizing tax. If uh, somebody's familiar with uh, required minimum distributions, you know, all this retirement money you've been working hard to put away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is we try to help them minimize what they're going to pay in retirement. So we basically don't like to wait until they're 65 and then they're saying, oh, I'm, I'm paying all this tax. I don't want to pay this tax. Um, I had one of my clients that was working part-time at her church. They were paying her, and it kicked her into a higher tax bracket. Oh, what a mess. So, so she ended up paying more taxes to Uncle Sam, so she ended up resigning that position and volunteering so she wouldn't have to pay the extra tax. Wow. that's And you helped her figure out that that's what she had to do. Yeah. And she said, hey, I'd rather volunteer my time than give it to Uncle Sam. I totally get that and understand. And see, I didn't even know that about you. That's pretty. <laughs> that's a pretty cool thing. So you and I were talking the other day because, man, I, I get these calls all the time with people that have a – they'll have a, an insurance. Maybe they have a uh, an advantage plan or something like that, and now they have huge out of – pocket costs, and they um, can't get the care in a long-term care if they need rehab for more than seven days, they're struggling to get the coverage. So tell me, is there anything we can do about that, or do we just grit our teeth and try to get through? No, actually, there is a, uh, if you, you know, decide that you wanted a Medicare Advantage plan, and there are advantages. They have a lot of things. They have Silver sneaker benefits. They have, uh, you know, some of the other ones. If you qualify for Medicaid, they have, you know, they give you money every month, which you can use freely to spend groceries, a utility bill, whatever you mm -hmm. deem necessary. Um, but there are also um, hospital indemnity plans that will cover those high deductibles. If you if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan and you have a bad health year. Yeah. You could be out of ta out of pocket four or five thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, for about fifty bucks a month, a hospital indemnity plan would cover that four or five thousand dollars out of pocket. Okay. So that way, that you know, you basically wouldn't be bankrupted, or you spending all this money that you've worked hard to save for your retirement. You know, so you can go on those trips that you want to go on that you right. left on your bucket right. list. So you're not paying that to the local hospital if if you have a bad year. So okay. that's that's one way to protect yourself. Okay. And uh, so you mentioned something, if you have a bad health year. So let's say you're healthy and you're 65 and you're looking at all of the choices that are out there. Tell me, tell me what seems like a good idea for someone who is of good health at 65 and has to make a decision. And they let's say they don't have unlimited funds. Let's say they're kind of limited. What are some good ideas? There, and there are a lot of uh, Medicare Advantage plans that, that have a zero monthly payment. Okay. And so a lot of people, just because of their monthly income, they can't afford to go on, say, pay $200 or $250 a month yes. for a Medicare GAP plan, as they call them, some people, or a Medicare supplement. Okay. Um, 
because you also need a prescription plan because the Medicare supplement does not cover any prescription mm. um, drugs. Right. And even if you're not on any drugs, if you don't sign up for a prescription plan the minute you become eligible for Medicare, Medicare will penalize you, and they can penalize you up to 36% of the average right. prescription plan in your area. Yeah, and that is what I went to um, a workshop with one of my second mamas, and that was blowing my mind. There were so many options out there, but yet you have you are required to, to have a prescription plan. You're required to have certain things, and she's health, she's healthy. So, but I feel like, you know, you could be insurance poor, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're, we're insurance poor while we're at work all these years. And then you retire and you're expecting to get, you know, some Medicare, Medicaid. And then yet I still see people that are insurance poor. Right. Um, If you, if you call a brand and I'm not going to name, but if you call Mm -hmm. one of the two or three main companies (laughs) that, that have advantage plans, they will usually put you on a more expensive drug plan. Mm -hmm. Um, um, there are drug plans that are only $9 a month. Okay. So you could protect yourself from any penalty by being on that $9 along with your Medicare supplement plan. Okay. That way that you wouldn't be penalized later on if something happens, you have to be on an expensive prescription plan. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's, that's one way to do it. Um, there are also like a Medicare Advantage plan has has prescription drugs built into some of them. Okay. There are some there there are the called usually referred to as honor plans. They're only uh, for uh, they don't include a prescription plan, um, and veterans mostly use these honor plans because okay. they get drugs at the VA hospital. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you did mention something. You said if at some point down the road you have to switch to a higher plan. So what you're telling me is that if you sign up for something today, you're 65 years old, you're making your choices, you're, you've got a list of what you need, you're checking it twice, um, you are not stuck forever and ever, amen, with what you chose at 65 with whatever – knowledge you had at that time. No, you're not. In fact, that's okay. actually coming up is AEP. And during What's AEP, AEP America, I mean, uh, annual enrollment. Oh, okay. Um, so annual enrollment, you can switch plans. The plan doesn't take effect now, but it would take effect on January 1st. Oh, okay. And, and what so, is that period that's coming up? Is that October through December? October 15th through December 7th. Okay. Okay. Um, so you could, you could switch out during that time, but also there are times that are special enrollment, uh, SCP, and you could take, if something medically happened to you, mm-hmm. um, they have chronic plans. So you're, um, something you you start having heart problems well they have chronic plans that are designed just for you to that specialize in what you need they okay. there's usually cheaper on drugs that are you know people that that need for their you know heart problems and stuff like that so then if if you qualified for one of those SCPs and you'd probably have to go through your doctor to qualify okay then you would be able to switch the plan so even if that happens in March, right, I can say I, all of a sudden I had a heart incident and that's going to change my care and my care needs. And I can be proactive about that and start to go for that special enrollment. You, you, usually you qualify an SEP, you could switch. It's usually once every quarter. So four times a year you could you could switch if that plan was not meeting your needs. Do you know how much better that makes me feel (laughs) hearing that? (laughs) Because I hear so often people saying, oh, this is the plan that I have. And all of a sudden, it's not working anymore. And I had Kim Avenger on, and she was talking one time about how if you're in a skilled nursing facility and suddenly you need more than seven days of care and you can make some switches to mm-hmm. make sure that you're getting that care. You do need someone, I think, to help navigate through those things. And that's why I really valued meeting you. 
you aren't just selling for one company or another. You're a lot like I am. In the placement business, I am a broker. Mm -hmm. I look at every assisted living that I, and I'm contracted with all in the Gainesville area, Lake City area, uh, many in Ocala. And um, I'm able to look and say, here are what your physical needs are. Here are what your financial needs are and, and find the best fit. And I feel like that is what you do. We, we at, uh, at, at PNL, American Senior Benefits, we basically take on a fiduciary responsibility. And we want to put you in the best plan for you. We, we don't have a, any alignment with any single company. And so okay. we want to make sure that, that it works for you. And, and I've met with a couple people. And I couldn't give them anything any better. They, they, were, they had the best available care. And so, you know, it was basically, you know, talking about the pros and cons, you know, they were wanting to know if they could save money on what they were currently on. Yeah. And they really couldn't because they had, you know, underlying health um, mm. issues that if they switched over, they would have been more at risk in the future. Gotcha. So, so there are times where we, we cannot help somebody, but it's, it's looking at your best interest. Yeah. And, and saying, you know, it may be tight right now, but if you do this, you're going to be more at risk in the future, you know, when you need more health care. Yeah, yeah. And I love that you're willing to sit there and um, you evaluate with each client, right, mm -hmm. to see what your needs are. For example, um, I am, I'm married. I've been happily married for years now. And as we age, when it's time for us to sit down and look at a plan is the plan that I need necessarily going to be the plan that he needs. Is it, have you ever seen a spouse not have the same exact plan? As oh, the yes, other yes. Okay. And, and most times they don't because there, there are totally different issues with each one. I yeah. mean, I, I'm not going to generalize here, but women usually see the same doctor as long as possible. <laughs> and and they're, yep. they're comfortable with that person. So that, that plan would be designed around keeping them with that same doctor. Yeah, yeah. Um, men, we don't, we don't really have an attachment to a doctor. I mean, as long as they can write us a prescription when we're sick, yeah. you know, and see us as needed, that's all we, we really worry about. So, and typically you're going kicking and screaming to the doctor already. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, a woman may want a PPO so they can go see their, their physician anytime, whereas mm -hmm. a man... You know, an HMO may work fine for him. You know, he can go to that one yeah. practice and he doesn't care who sees him just as long as he gets treatment when he needs it. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, yeah, very rarely. I mean, there are some times where, you know, they're of similar health and the same plan will work, but you don't have to be on the same plan. Well, and that is that is new to me. That's new information. I've always been on the same insurance plan as, you know, my spouse and my children and all that. So um, it's not something I had even thought about until just now today. So really, it, everybody needs to have a Charles in their life <laughs> that they can sit down and help them navigate. Because I remember trying to figure this out when um, my Becca mama turned 65. And man, it was so daunting. And then she finally made a decision, and we have still had several conversations since then that said, did you make the right decision? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you doing what's best for you financially and for your health care needs today? Right. So um, if there isn't a Charles, how do you find a Charles in your area? Because not everybody can tap into you if they're not in Gainesville, right? Um, if anybody, if, if you're not in the Gainesville area listening to this and you need to talk to somebody, I, I can find you somebody that, uh, that with my company, we're all over the United States. Okay. So I, right. I could find you somebody. I'm, I'm licensed in Florida and Georgia, so I can pretty well talk to anybody in this area. If you're outside of Florida and Georgia, then I could find somebody from an office near you so that you could, they could come out and talk to you. Okay, because I really do like, I, I notice a lot of people when they start to have questions, they will call a one company or another. And of course, that company is going to sell them their product, whether or not it's the right fit. So um, I really love the idea of finding someone that can really just help to tailor those needs to each individual. And one thing to be careful of is if you're on the phone 
and you call your company, they could switch you to another plan and you not even know it. Mm-hmm. And okay, wow. So so they they may you know, and and you may be just sitting there agreeing with what they're saying, and they take that as a confirmation that they can switch you. And I have actually heard that that happened, and it was mind blown that that could happen that mm-hmm. someone switched and had really no idea that they had switched and now all of a sudden you know they had restrictions they didn't have before and uh so it can it can get to be messy but it's also I feel like it's hopeful that there are people like you out there what is your title if someone is looking for someone like you and they cannot connect with your particular company what is your title um I, I call myself a retirement specialist okay. because we look at everything, you know, all aspects of your retirement, not just your medical, but we want to make sure that, you know, financially you're surviving, you know, and I want you starving to death and you're on an yeah. expensive insurance plan and, you know, you can't buy yourself groceries. So therefore, exactly. or your medication <laughs> and you're getting sicker. Yeah, and um, I'm yeah. seeing more and more of that these days because, you know, inflation is just really rocking people's worlds. So we need to have more of these conversations. And even if you have a plan already, you can still sit down and reevaluate, especially now. Now is the time. Mm-hmm. That window you said is October 15th to December, December 7th. 7th. So there is that window of time that if you feel like you're drowning in um in your in your medicare medicaid advantage all the costs that are associated with all these different plans definitely reach out to you can reach out to me and i'll connect you to charles and we can help you to find someone in your area charles do you have any other words of wisdom for us any great stories you want to share (laughs) and i and i will say that that a lot of people are unsure they're afraid to reach out to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had one woman that contacted me, and she was literally in tears. And um, they had basically kicked her off of, of Medicare and Medicaid. And uh, so I basically got her to uh, contact our local representative, and they actually helped her get back on Medicare and Medicaid. Oh, now, this awesome. woman this woman has throat cancer and can hardly speak, and basically Medicaid told her that she was not disabled anymore. Oh, wow. So anyway, she basically, they, they took care of her, and uh, so she's back on Medicare and Medicaid again and, and able to go see her doctor. Wow, that's wonderful. So you really were able to help to advocate Mm -hmm. for her and with her and give her the words to say. And sometimes that's all we need is just it is. It is. Even even if you're unsure, you know, you're wondering if there's an option out there. I mean, I would love to sit down with you and and walk you through and see if, you know, because all these new plans are coming out now. Um, they'll be during AEP. Um, we can't start talking about them until October 1st. But, okay. <laughs> but if there's something you don't like about your plan, it's now is the time to think about it and, and have some action. You know, maybe, maybe there's nothing you can do about it, but at least you'll know in the back of your mind you did what you had to do. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm so encouraged by that. And so um, this hopefully will hit in the next couple of weeks and will be well within that window. I think people will start to see this in probably the first week or so of October. Um, and I I would love to be able to connect you to Charles if you need a Charles in your life. Uh, another thing I would love for you to do is um, like and um, subscribe. And if you can, share this as a tool with others who might benefit from this. I know I get these questions about the insurance coverage daily, um, multiple times a day sometimes. So please do me a favor and share with your people that are, you know, somewhere between 60 and 65 and they're considering these options that are coming up and even 65 and older. It's you can you can rethink and look again and see what's best for you. Charles, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate having you here. You're welcome. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks.